Last time on the Skip and Josh podcast. All the fans and all the media in Toronto, they're all complaining like, oh, this guy didn't get enough ice time or, you know, he should have been playing on a different line with different, or it's Babcock's fault for not coaching properly. I have to tell you something. All these people need to calm down because once you get to a game seven, it doesn't matter which team is better. It doesn't matter which team had more points in the regular season. It doesn't matter which team has home ice advantage. Once you get to a game seven, you might as well just flip a coin. You're listening to the Skip and Josh Podcast with Skip Sherman and Josh Obadia. I'm Josh, back in the Midwest. And I'm Skip in Montreal. In today's episode, the NHL has a weasel problem. The ban on the NBA is lifted. And empty seats at baseball stadiums. But first, the Kentucky Derby. Okay, Skip, I'm back in the Midwest, so and you're still in Montreal, and I just want to give a little uh, housekeeping here. We're going to talk about, on this episode, we're going to do an NFL draft recap, a CFL draft recap, and a Kentucky, Kentucky Derby preview. Okay, how long is that going to take? It's already done. We're finished. Uh, oh, good. You stole my thunder about the Kentucky Derby. I was saving it for the end. Well, because I know you're a big fan of horse racing now. so I'm very disappointed because I'm going to miss it this year because as I have some uh, family plans this afternoon that where I won't be able to be in front of a TV. So I'm, I'm going to end up missing the Kentucky Derby, which is, believe it or not, it saddens me. <laughs> the whole race is two minutes. You can't find two minutes to watch the race? I could probably watch on my phone, actually, if I get in at the right time. Yeah. Who's, who's going to win? I don't know any of the horses. <laughs> I never do. I just like to watch it. Are, are we going to have a triple crown winner again this year? No, the favorite is like, I don't know the horse's name. But the favorite, <laughs> I think, is sick or something. So they had to pull out of the race. So I don't know. I just like, I just like the whole, I just like the whole thing. I, my favorite part is like the, the announcer, the two minute mm. announcing of the thing. I think it's exciting. Who's, who does the announcing? I don't know. It's different guys every year. So okay. there's a track announcer usually. All right. It's good. Yeah. Okay. Have you ever been to uh, any horse race in your life? I have actually. Yes. Where? At, in Montreal when they used to have the blue bonnets. Okay. But that was I harness to, racing though. That was harness racing. Yeah. I went a few times. Yeah. All right. Put some money down on some horses. Harness racing seems like it would be more dangerous because if that harness gets uh, tangled up with something, then uh, there's yeah. a problem. It wasn't. It wasn't like exciting to go to the the racetrack. It's like a bunch of degenerates there, Is and then it... there's then there's like nineteen year old me with all you know, like all nervous, you know. Um. I don't know. It's raining here. I don't know what the weather is in Kentucky, but um, that's if it's raining, that's good for the mutters. Yeah, but it's a little slow out there. Rain last night. Oh, this baby loves the slop. Loves it. Eats it up. Eats the slop. Born the slop. His father was a mutter. His father was a mutter. His mother was a mutter. His mother was a mutter. What did I just say? Hey. All right. Uh, Six hundred Papernick to win. <laughs> yeah, it's good for the mutters. It's true. The National Hockey League. I meant to mention this last time we spoke, but I forgot because the first round of the NHL playoffs had sort of just ended or was in the process of ending when we spoke last. Yeah. And it's interesting because the eight teams that advanced to the second round, you know, they interview usually the captain of the team after they've clinched and, and moved on. Right. And, and they ask like basically the same question. To the well, captain. They're useless questions. They're useless questions. Of course, they're useless. Like, so how did you guys do it? Like, how did you guys beat whoever you beat? And how did you advance to the second round? And I yeah. mean, you know, for the teams that won, if not all eight, but for the teams Swept. that won, you know, should not have won. Like, were upsets. Yeah, yeah I know. Oh, right, right. So I guess that's why they're asking, how did you do it? And it's interesting because I, I, I heard like all the interviews with all the captains and they all said the same thing. Like, they all said exactly the same thing. Which what is they say we all gave one hundred and ten percent. We really left it all out on the ice, and uh, you know the Lord God willing. <laughs> the, actually, NHL players don't usually praise no, the Lord that much. It wasn't it wasn't that, but it was almost as bad as that. They all said the same thing. They said, you know, and it wasn't these exact words. I'm paraphrasing. It really helps when you have the best goalie in the world on your team. Oh, which, so there's so many best goalies in the world. I wanted to shoot myself in the head because that means all eight of them have the best goalie in the world. They they can't all them. Seven of them must be wrong. Right. 
Right. You know, not maybe only that, one of them is right. Maybe. N- not only that, like the Leafs who lost, like Don Cherry said, Freddie Anderson's the best goalie in the world. He right. said that. Right. And I mean, you and- turn on any any day out of 365 days on Montreal Sports Talk and you'll hear at least one caller saying Carey Price is the best goalie in the world. Right. And he wasn't even in <laughs> the playoffs. And he wasn't even in the playoffs. <laughs> so, you know, like. It's Interesting. Just- just a head scratcher for me. So the Carolina Hurricanes think Peter Mrazek's the best goalie in the world? Well, no, because now he didn't even play the last two games. Last oh, two and a half games. It's Curtis McElhaney. Yeah. <laughs> so they have they have the two the two best goalies in the world, I guess, Amazing. on their team. Amazing, right? Yeah. Are have you been watching a lot of NHL playoffs? I mean, have you been I, watching the second round? The games are on. I have them all I have them on on the television, yeah. but I'm doing other stuff, so I'm not focused on the game. You know, yeah. if something exciting happens, I'll, I'll I'll perk up and see what's going on. But yeah, um, you know, I, I it's it's I said this to you actually during the first round. You know how the Islanders dominated Pittsburgh, um, and then I said, you know, I'm interested to see what happens in the second second round. Are it's the Island, are the Islanders really good, or was <laughs> it just that Pittsburgh was so bad? And now we have our answer because the Islanders got swept. Right, Pittsburgh was. I mean, we. I said it, and I think you agreed with me. Like, Pittsburgh was incredibly inconsistent the whole season. Yeah. You know, they started off like garbage. Then they looked like they were cha- Stanley Cup champions again. Then they would then they would lose, like, 10 out of 15. And then they would win, like, 10 out of 15. And, and then, then they snuck into the playoffs. They didn't sneak into the playoffs, but they only qualified for the playoffs in the last week. You know, it's not like they, they, they were going in full of, full of confidence. And then they came up against an Islander team that was full of confidence, you know, and especially in their goaltending. But then, but then they, the Islanders faced a team that even had more confidence. Carolina, they don't think they can lose, you know. Well, the truth is, the the four wild card teams they have nothing to lose, right? They have no pressure because they're not even supposed to be there. Yeah. So, so they're just going out and having fun, and you know, they're not they're not gripping their sticks tighter or anything like that. They're not under any pressure. Yeah. And, and I feel like the press in some of those cities is not the same as what's being covered in like cities like Toronto where it's all doom and gloom and then it's like they they tend to look at a lot a lot of these cities tend to look at stuff like negative what did the coach do wrong what did the players do wrong whereas in Carolina it's all rainbows right now everything's gravy you know anything they do is great you know and and anything that comes out of this playoffs is going to just be the icing on the cake you know so lots a lot of clichés i just did in like one sentence who's who's the hockey beat reporter in Carolina i don't even know I, who it is couldn't tell you yeah, listen, good for Carolina. Congratulations to them. But, yeah. you know, while they are, I guess, somewhat of a Cinderella story, they've actually won a Stanley Cup. Yeah, of course. You know, they're not in the like... same boat as, as Columbus or um, yeah. or or San Jose. I don't think San Jose ever has, won, has ever won a Stanley Cup. No, they just or, they or St. Louis. The final. St. Louis never won either, and they made it to the final, not so much in our lifetimes, but, like, in the early days of the expansion. Right. Because they were in the because they were in the they expansion were in the other side. conference, exactly. So there was always one team from that conference that was going to make it to the final. The Blues have been a good team for our whole life. Good. Well, they've been good. I don't know, you know, but like they've never. I never thought of them really as a contender. I mean, look, they've had they had a lot of years with Brett Hull. They had the Chris Pronger era. You know, like the before before Brett Hull. You know, with like um, Bernie Federko and Mike Leach. Exactly, Leant. Bernie Bernie Federko. You read my mind. It reminds me a lot of Los Angeles, St. Louis, in that it's like we think of them as like we don't tend to think of them as like a hockey market, but the team has been there for so long. There's a big fan base, you know, like it. it there's a big loyal fan base. It's not like it's not like hockey doesn't belong there. You, know? you neglected to mention the Rick Walmsley era in St. Louis. <laughs> yeah. Okay. When was that? 85, 86? Around there somewhere. Yeah. 86, mm-hmm. 87, 88, I think. I don't know. Right. Or the Gretzky era, which was like for... Th- 15 games yeah 20 games right very short-lived so look to be honest i haven't watched a lot of the hockey um i i watch when i can but i mean the 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 carolina is over they won and the other series i think are all going seven don't you feel uh well what are they two two or three two all those other series i mean they're all they're all super tight columbus and boston there's not much separating those two teams Looked like maybe San Jose had the upper hand over Colorado, but Colorado won last game, so now the series is tightened up again. And Dallas, St. Louis, I mean, flip a coin, no? I agree. Have you seen, by the way, the the Carolina Hurricanes like their alternate third jersey? 
No, is it the Whalers? They no, should wear no, the it's not. It's not. You Google it because I saw it. They've used it quite a lot. Yeah. I don't understand it. Like usually you can sort of figure out why they've used that logo or, but it's basically a hockey stick that looks like a flag. It's awful. And it looks look it like, it it's looks like disgusting. the letter, it looks like the letter B because you've got those two squares that looks like the letter B. But what does that have to do with the Carolina Hurricanes? I don't understand. It does look like the letter B with a hockey stick, or it's like a hockey stick with two flags hanging on it. Maybe there's some kind of significance there. I mean, we don't tend to think of these black and red as Carolina colors because, like, for us, it's like the dark blue of Duke or the powder blue of North Carolina. Mm -hmm. But NC State, these are NC State colors. You know? Right, right. Okay. So, but, I mean, no, I don't get the uh, logo at all. <laughs> I have to look up the significance. Maybe uh, maybe we have like a listener that will enlighten us as to why. There's I found this this thing online where it, it has like it talks about all the differences in their third jersey. Um but it doesn't explain what it is. Anyway. Right. Okay. Did you want to talk about any more hockey cuz there is something hockey related that I wanted to talk about unrelated to the playoffs. Please go ahead. So do you know that they had these big hearings this week in parliament? Oh yes, I do know. About, you know, uh, concussions in sports, specifically in hockey. And, I mean, I don't I don't think politics and sports should mix. The government has no business really telling the NHL what to do. <laughs> but w since they did, <laughs> we, we have a lot of interesting quotes and, and things to talk about. Like, I know you hate Gary Bettman. I do. <laughs> right? Could he be more of an idiot? Like no, he said no, he some can't. stuff this week. He said some stuff this week that I was just like, what planet are you on? Like, are you in the same reality as the rest of us humans standing over here? Like, it just doesn't make sense. You know, he can get up in front of lawyers and judges and parliament and U.S. Congress, whoever, and say that there's no link between CTE, which, you know, is this traumatic brain injuries that they've found in players that have passed away. They can say that there's no link between CTE and uh, and playing hockey. He can he can shout that to the roof to the cows come home, and he he may be right. Like we don't know. It's it's not like it's very very difficult to prove. So in a court of law, if he comes out and says that, maybe you know, like he he can say it. I don't agree with it, but he can say it. But they asked him, what can the NHL do? What can the National Hockey League do to make to make things more safe for the players in terms of head injuries? And he said, we don't want to legislate. Um, we don't want to come down too hard on the head injuries because I believe, and this is what exactly what he said, I believe that it's going to affect body checking and it's going to effectively remove body checking from the game. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay, Gary, we get it. You, do want, you want the game to be violent. You want there to be hitting. I understand. But they asked him. Is there any rule changes that the NHL could make to reduce head contact? And here's the exact quote. When asked if there are any rule changes he would make to reduce head contact, Bettman told members of Parliament he likes the way professional hockey is being played, adding, right now, I don't believe there's much we can do. Now, <laughs> there's one pretty simple rule change that you could do to reduce guys getting punched in the head with a fist. Which is to take away, like, like ban fighting. I understand you don't want to take checking out of the game, but how will banning fighting remove body checking? There, there, the, the two doesn't connect, right? You can easily remove fighting. You just do it. Did you did when they asked him about that as well? Did you hear his response to that when he when they no, asked him? No, I didn't. So they asked him about fighting, and his response to that, I don't have the quote in front of me, but he said that apparently. They did a poll um, and half of the players in the league responded to the poll and a majority of them, a good majority of them said they want to keep fighting in the game because they'd rather have that as a way of policing things yeah. than have people slash others or high stick others or elbow others. That yeah, was his response I mean to that. Now, I don't know how true that is. I, I didn't see the results of the poll and I don't know who answered the poll and who didn't, mm -hmm. but mm -hmm. uh, that's, that was his response to that. But he did look like a big weasel during that yeah. hearing. He's a weasel. Yeah. He's a weasel. There's, there's every other sport and um, NFL. If you fight, you're tossed out of the game. Baseball, you fight, you're tossed out of the game. NBA, you fight, you're tossed out of the game. And the NBA goes even further. 
in that if you fight, not only are you tossed out of the game, you're most likely suspended for other games, mm -hmm. right? I mean, there is no sport that has hitting to the head other than like boxing and MMA. Like that's the only sports that have fighting. And those are, those are fighting sports. That's what they are. You know, that's the nature. But like, it doesn't, it's so, and, and, and then there's probably people listening that are like, oh, skip, and, you know, you're soft. You want to get rid of fighting. There's always these people that think fighting is so important in hockey. But, you know, in, in 10 years from now, God, God forbid Bettman is still the commissioner, or in 20 years from now, like he said, they took a poll. But that number is going to keep going down because all the new players coming into the league are coming from junior hockey where and other and lower leagues where there is no fighting and there's much, much less fighting, right? Mm. Because most of the junior leagues here in Canada have taken big steps to kind of get rid of fighting. You know, the instigator penalties are so high. I mean, I went to see Quebec major, major junior games and there's 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 the punishments are so huge for fighting that they don't do it, right? Mm -hmm. So eventually when they take another poll in 10 years and another a whole new crop of players, they're not going to hopefully they won't see the importance of fighting and Bettman's not going to have this excuse. I just I just think it's I just think it's barbaric and it's not how is fighting part of a sport? Hockey should be about the skill of the game. Part of the skill is the checking and the physicality because you need to be bigger and stronger sometimes than your opponent or or um, more tenacious. Like there, there's a lot of that that goes into hockey. But, you know, me being able to punch someone in the head better than I could take a punch, that's boxing. That's not hockey. I agree with you. What I did like about the whole hearing was that, first of all, anytime you see Gary Bettman being interviewed by Ron McLean or anybody on television, they, uh. they have to tread lightly of what they ask him because he doesn't like answering certain questions and he'll change the subject and he won't right. answer the question anyway. But yeah. here he was cornered because this wasn't a television interview and right. he basically had to answer what they were asking. And he did still try to weasel his way out of answering some of the questions. You, you could see that he was doing that. Um, I also like the fact that it, it just so happened to, to be on the day after Brad Marchand punched somebody in the head and yeah. made the NHL look really bad because they didn't yeah. suspend him. Um, so I, I, I like that it made him look bad. I really did enjoy that. That Brad Marchand thing is gross. I mean, it's just, it's like, yeah, people are going to say he barely touched him and it wasn't a big hit. He was a, it was like a more than a tap, but less than a punch. I don't know how to describe it. You know, it wasn't really ever going to hurt him, but what's the point of it? And, and the thing is this little weasel Marchand, he's been doing that for years. You know, Thomas Placanic posted he himself posted on Twitter side by side video of the Marchand um punch to the head from this week and a Marchand punching Placanic in the face off circle like six years ago. And it's the same exact exactly exactly the same thing. He he we he's he sidles up to the guy, you know, in stealth mode, like he's a little miss little Mr. Innocent, and then he just punches the guy in the head and hopes no one sees. In this case, everybody saw and if somehow he didn't get punished, you know? Yeah, it, it was it was Especially he's it's a repeat a joke. offender. The whole story with the NHL discipline system is that if you're a repeat offender, they're supposed to come down hard on you. Like, I don't get it, you know? Anyway, the best thing would be if the Bruins got eliminated. That would be the best thing. That's, yeah, that's the best. Might. That's the I best mean, punishment Marchand could have. Like I said, flip a coin. Columbus could easily win the series. I hope so. I really hope they do. I'm not a fan of Tortorella, but I dislike the Bruins more, so. You know, I'm not a fan of Tortorella at all. I can't stand him. But... I ha you have to respect him as a coach, you know. Well, until until his uh, message just gets tired and old, and the players stop responding. Yeah, I think that's what happens because you know he's so strong in his the way he speaks and his like, who who can you imagine how he is in the dressing room with the players? Who knows how he is? We see how he is with the reporters. Yeah, I think the players like him a little bit because he kind of protects them. You know, he he's he takes all the heat and he gives all the heat. The players just don't have to deal with the press as much. Probably in Columbus, they don't have to deal with the press as much anyways. But I don't know. You're right. Until his message gets old. But that's like every coach, no? Yeah, but it just he seems to happen quicker with Tortorella. Yeah. That what he has yeah. going for him is that there's all those new players they acquired at the tread de trade deadline that yeah. uh, haven't been around that long. So yeah. they're not tired of his voice yet. Right. And then all, and also Bobrovsky you know, decided that he's a great goalie again. Bobrovsky! Right, and maybe Bobrovsky doesn't understand English, and so he's not tired of Tortorella either. <laughs> maybe that's it. Maybe that's it. All right, that's all I have for hockey. Okay. The National Basketball Association. Last year, 
after the Golden State Warriors won their championship, uh huh, I declared on this show that we sh- we I uh, banned the NBA from us talking about the NBA on this show because I didn't want to. I didn't want to like waste time talking about a sport where we already knew who the champion was going to be <laughs> 12 months before the championship is awarded, right? right. And, and and that situation still exists. I mean, the Golden State Warriors are still the the favorite, you know, like they they still are the big favorite to win. But I am going to lift the ban because I want to tell you I haven't been watching any NHL playoffs by have been watching a ton of NBA playoffs and the games are exciting and the series are exciting it's the opposite of the NHL the NHL round one was great Mm -hmm. and now I've kind of lost interest in round two in the NBA round one was garbage but now now that we have more of the big boys left in round two and we have some great matchups um the NBA playoffs are fantastic now I want to tell you something that happened to me last night okay I mentioned to you off the air I picked my daughter up at a sweet 16 last night I got home late and then I was about to go to bed, and uh, I just glanced at my phone, and I saw that there was five minutes left in the Portland-Denver game, and it, the score was tied. I said, oh, I'll go watch the last five minutes. That was yeah. that was mistake number one. Yeah. So then four overtimes later, <laughs> yeah, I went to bed at 2 o'clock in the morning. I, you know, I so, didn't. I did not stay up for that. I had no clue what was going on in that game. And when I woke up this morning and saw that it went into four overtimes, I was glad that I went to bed. Yeah, it's such a great series because the teams are good. Obviously, they're playoff teams. They both have some really exciting players to to watch. You know, like Damian Lillard's fantastic, and CJ McCollum is amazing on Portland. And I don't know, you don't follow the NBA, but like, you know, this guy Nikola Jokic on Denver. I've heard the name. Yeah, he's like seven feet, six eleven, whatever he is, he's huge. And he touches the ball more than any player. Like they have stats that show like he touches the ball um more double the amount that any other big man in the league the whole year, like touches every game, mm-hmm. every time he handles the ball. And in the playoffs, he's he's handling the ball more than most point guards, <laughs> you know? Every single thing goes through him, you know. So, you know, he had like thirty points and he had another triple double last night with like 30-something points and I think 17 rebounds and 14 or 15 assists. You know, he's he does everything. And then, you know, Denver has Canadian kid, Jamal Murray, who went to Kentucky, mm-hmm. who's sort of turning into a little bit of a super, a little bit of a star in the playoffs. Although he still has a way to go, but I mean, he's the best they've got, you know, so he takes a lot of shots. I just think the NBA playoffs is great. I watched the Celtics last night and, and then my son is super into the Sixers. The Sixers, so um, obviously we're inundated with Raptors here in Canada. So the Sixers Raptors is all over the place. Although, like in our house, the uh, it's the Sixers that are being rooted for. And then the the most not the most exciting, but the most um, high profile series is Houston Golden State. Although Golden State's winning two nothing. Did you hear about the what the Houston Rockets did this week with this? You didn't hear? No. Well. I think I know what you're referring to, but before you get to that, I was going to ask you a question about the NBA playoffs. Sure. When did the NBA become like, like the NFL? In what way? Well, cause like Golden State and Houston, they haven't played in a week. Oh, the NF, the NBA playoffs is out of whack. My, it's out. I, I can't even tell you, can't even explain the scheduling. And not only that, like the Celtics, I told you last week, they went a week between rounds. Okay, but that's between rounds, right? Yeah, but here, Maybe. like Golden State and and yeah. and Houston, I think they played on was it Sunday or Monday? Yeah, now they're playing on Saturday night. They wanted they wanted to do anything to get the game on Saturday night. I don't know. It doesn't make sense. Maybe there's other things happening in. Well, no, the games are going to Houston. They're not. I don't know. I can't. I can't explain the NBA schedule at all. Honestly, I just can't explain it at all. Okay. It's it's there's a lot of weird uh, off days. Like it's just random off days. Just random. You know. So you were going to explain to me what the Rockets did this week. And I think I heard what they did, but go ahead and tell yeah. me. So, you know, like enemy number one in the NBA is the Golden State Warriors. Everybody hates them, mm-hmm. right? After Kevin Durant went to the Warriors, everybody hates the Warriors because it's like they're assembling a super team and no one can beat them. It's like you can't beat them, join them type of mentality. So everybody likes to root against them. And I think the Houston Rockets did something this week that are changing people's minds and maybe like... <laughs> People are not going to be rooting for the Rockets. Like, so, you know, they lost game seven last year in the conference finals to the Warriors. Yeah. So apparently after the game, 
for months after the game, they assembled this report detailing every single play in the game and every single referee decision. And they applied their own analytic their own analytics to this report and determined that they were they lost 18.6 points in that game because of referees decisions that went didn't go their way. Well, they how should do you have lose had 18... 0.6 of a point. Well, because it's the way they calculate it. They they have some calculations, but they they feel that they should have had 18 more points in that game 7 than because of bad referee calls. Mm-hmm. And apparently it takes into account calls that went for them and against the Warriors, apparently. Mm-hmm. Now, they never released this report. They 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 had meetings with the league about it mm-hmm. where they re, where they presented it to them. Mm-hmm. But it was never released to the public. Fast forward a year to now. And Houston loses game one. And they feel that the refs screwed them. Then the announcement comes out the, the 24 hours before the next game, which is standard procedure in the NBA, that this referee, Scott Foster, is going to be refing the game. All the Rocket players hate him. They've complained about him the entire season. And it, since the game in February, they complained about him so much. He actually hasn't refed any Rockets game since February. And lo and behold, all of a sudden, like as if by miracle, the audit of Game 7 from last year is released the same day that, they're, that they think they're getting screwed even more by the refs. You know, They have a pref co- press conference to say we got screwed in Game 1. Then they say we we're getting screwed in Game 2 even before the game started because we don't like the ref. So then out of magic, this report appears showing uh, but all the bad stuff that happened a week ago. It's like a year ago, sorry. It's like they're lining up their excuses. It's, I, I, don't, I feel like the Rockets management screwed the players. <laughs> they screwed them even more. The players are already complaining about the refs, and then this thing gets released. Now they're even screwed even more. You know, because it's like it's like they're giving them the excuses. Oh, here's your excuse. You know, if you lose, you already have the excuses why you lost. Mm-hmm. Now, the the biggest reason why they lost Game Seven last year is because they missed 27 three pointers in a row. I remember last that. year in that Game Seven, they missed 27 three pointers in a row. Now tell me, <laughs> tell me how the refs screwed you when that when you when you can't make a basket, right? Well, sorry, the thing is, sorry, Houston, you 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 blew it. Look, refs make mistakes all the time in every sport. All the and, time. And because there's so many different there's so many possessions in a basketball game, yeah. you're going to have just a higher quantity of mistakes in basketball than you will in let's say hockey. Yeah. Um and but I don't know. I've never really analyzed this. I I would imagine that if you figured it out over the course of an entire season, the mistakes do even themselves out. So yeah, yeah, the Rockets may get screwed a lot more in in one game, but the Warriors may get screwed more in the next game, or who knows. But, but the thing is, with the Houston Rockets, is James Harden was fouled more times than any player in the league by a mile. He shot more free throws. He made more free throws than anybody by a mile. He gets all the calls. <laughs> you know, he does. He get, gets he all does the get. calls. And and in the playoffs, sometimes it's. Look, we talked about how in the NHL, the play, the refereeing is different. They let a lot of stuff go. And the same happens in, in basketball. Play is a little bit more physical. It's a little bit more difficult to get to the basket, right? And maybe some stuff that was called for fouls in the regular season are not being called now. And they don't like it. But tough. You got to live with it. You got to adapt, you know? Don't miss 27 three-pointers in a row. That's how you win. Sorry. I didn't see much of, of any of the NBA games. But I did hear that the first two games of the of the warriors Rocket series were both good games, and they were close. They were. I mean, the scores, I saw the final score, and they were both close games. They're good. Um, They're good. But, I mean, the thing is, uh, the Warriors are just a bit better, right? That's all. But now the, sh- the series shifts to Houston, so we'll see if that makes any difference. It should. Home field, home court is big in the NBA. Although in the playoffs, it's like everybody, the home courts have lost, you know? Like, Celtics lost on their home court last night, and um, well, we saw what happened with the Raptors. Yes, we did. <laughs> yeah. So that's my rant about the NBA. Okay. I mean, I don't I know you don't watch that much, but I just feel like the ban needed to be lifted because it's been a very exciting playoff. I'm okay. We're not lifting the ban on golf though, just so you know. Golf. Okay. Major League Baseball. Did you want to talk any baseball at all? I mean, I have one little baseball note. Um I was uh changing the channels last night and I switched over to the Blue Jays game for a minute. 
Yeah. It was the 12th inning, went into extra innings, and the final score was one nothing. So it wasn't that exciting of a game, and I think there was a rain delay at the start of the game as well. Um, so it was quite late, and you know you've heard the expression, I mean, I think you've even said the expression, there was nobody at the game, right? Oh, God, I've seen some stuff this week where the stadiums are empty. So I'm watching, this is the 12th inning, Texas is trying to tie it up, they didn't end up tying it up, and... You know the angle where they show you, you know, from behind the pitcher. So yeah. you can see everybody sitting behind home plate, which is usually the most crowded area of the ballpark. There's 10,000 empty seats. They're literally, I have a, I took a picture of my television, as you know, yeah. I like to do. Yeah. There is nobody, not one person sitting what behind home was plate. In? It was in Texas. In Texas. Yeah, I've seen the picture. They've seen some pictures this week on Twitter. And I think I've seen that exact picture. Like not one person. Yeah. I'm not exaggerating when I say there was nobody. There was nobody there. I mean, there might have been other people sitting in other seats, but yeah. there was nobody there. I was like, what, did they not open the gates and let people in? I don't understand. Did Amazing. everyone have to leave because they were afraid that public transportation was going to, uh, you know, stop working and they they wanted to get home? It was hilarious. <laughs> and, you know, the sad thing is that uh, Texas is actually, well, I mean, they're 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 doing okay. I mean... They're not, like, playing horrible. They're not 500, but, like, they've got Joey... I don't know if you're following the stats. Like, Joey Gallo has a ton of home runs for them. He did, I think, get injured in the at-bat that I was referring to. Joey Gallo right. was the batter. He had a right. deep fly ball foul, and then he, I think he ended up striking out, and he hurt himself on that pitch. Right, okay. So. The amazing story so far for me when I look at some of the stats in, in baseball is like there's this two-man MVP race going on in the National League. I don't know if you're following what's going on with uh, Bellinger Yelich. and uh, Yelich. Yeah. Like they're both their stat. Well, Bellinger's hitting over 400, which is uh, crazy. Yelich is hitting a mere 353, <laughs> right? Bellinger's got 14 home runs. So does Yelich. And and Bellinger's got 38 RBIs and Yelich has 34. Like they're both like they're – when you look at the leaders, the league leaders, it's the two names in every single mm. category. You know? Well, good for them. And Yellis just Yellis just picked up from where he left off last year. Bellinger, there's always been the knock on him that maybe he couldn't hit lefties. But I don't uh, think clearly, they faced too many lefties this year. I think that's yeah, but I mean that's part of it. But I mean clearly, like when you're hitting four fifteen, <laughs> I think you're hitting well against both sides. And 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 the flip side of what you're telling me, have you looked at some pitchers' ERAs this year? Oh, my like God, the, some of them are crazy. And, and and a good ERA this year is like four, yeah. Because there are guys who have ERAs of six and eight yeah. and ten. But there's some really. There's been some very very good uh, pitching performances. There have there have like, been some good ones. You're right. Like well, I mean the Rays are in first place in the AL East, and it's mostly because of their pitching staff. Mm-hmm. And and uh, Ty- uh, Tyler Glass now, who was a big prospect for the Pirates and never really panned out, and they they kind of. Got him for nothing, Tampa. Mm-hmm. He's like he's like the best pitcher in the league right now. Right, right. There, yeah. there, there are some pitchers who are actually pitching well, but there are a lot of high ERAs out there. Like when I look oh, at the stats, tons, tons. Well, there's been a thousand home runs hit already this year. It's the most home runs ever hit in in the month of April. The ball must be juiced. Well, that's what they always. Say. No, no, but like I'm, I was actually at a Blue Jays game a couple of weeks ago, and yeah. during the pregame warmups, there was a you know two guys just tossing around the ball. Yeah. And and it, it bounced on the AstroTurf, which isn't even called AstroTurf anymore. No, it's like field turf. In Whatever it's it like, is. Yeah. The, that ball bounced. Like, I thought it was a Super Bowl the way it bounced. <laughs> like, it should not bounce that high. It was insane. We need to, uh, we need to um, just stop and for any listeners who are under the age of 40 and explain what a Super Bowl is. But <laughs> that's okay. Maybe we won't. Super Bowl is like a super bouncy ball. Like a ball that we had when we were kids that when you threw it against the ground or something it would bounce back so high because it was the the way the rubber is inside it was like i don't know it was from another planet all you had to do was drop it you didn't have to you didn't have to throw it if you just dropped yeah. it, it it would bounce back over your head yeah yeah so that's how this baseball bounced off the off the turf i'm like that that ball must be juiced hurry discover your new power with super ball under a dollar wherever toys are sold i've got my super ball by whammo like I said, there's been a record number of home runs hit in April. I don't know. I mean, is it bad pitching? Is it good hitting? Is it the ball, the bats? Like, it's the same story. We've gone through this a million times. Every, it seems like every five years we talk about how come there's, like, discussion about how come there's so many home runs, you know? 
Yeah, well, I mean, that's all I have for baseball other than that the Red Sox suck. <laughs> Yeah. Oh, there's one other baseball note because we mentioned we talked last week about Vlad Guerrero Jr. Yes. So I got a uh, a note from Derek, our our super listener here in Montreal. Mm-hmm. He liked a bit about when we talked about how come Vladdy is so fat. Yeah. <laughs> he says I'm watching CC Sabathia this week get his three thousand strikeout, and his wife walks into the room. She says, "What you watching?" And then he says, "Oh, this guy just got his three thousand strikeout, which is a pretty big deal." And then she says, but he's so fat. <laughs> so You don't need to so be in good shape to play baseball. You you don't, especially to be a pitcher, because like it's just as long as your shoulder right. is in shape. A pitcher right? in the American League who doesn't even have to bat. Yeah. So Vlad's not doing too well. I haven't really noticed his stats, but uh... he's like uh, struggling at the plate. So I think, you know. Hey, there's a lot to be said when a guy comes up with that much hype. There's a lot of pressure, you know? By the way, this no one cares about this, but uh, on my fantasy baseball team, yeah, um, there are no good catchers, as you know, in the majors. And so there's very few. Yeah. my catcher is Josh Fegley, who you probably who never even that? heard of. Yeah, exactly. Who the hell is that? He's the starting catcher for the Oakland A's. Anyway, he's... They don't have Kurt Suzuki anymore? I don't know what team he's on, but not Oakland. So I just wanted to mention that Josh Fegley yesterday, he had eight RBIs in one game, which I think he has a total of 16 all year, and he got eight of them yesterday. Eight RBIs in one game is impressive. Yeah, it wasn't a doubleheader. It was one game, and it wasn't an extra inning game either. Good for him. So And good for me too. Yeah. Are you doing okay in your fantasy? No, I'm not doing so well, but I'm playing book this week. (laughs) Book. (laughs) Does he have all the closers? Uh, he only has one save all week. I, I, I punted saves. I don't have any closers on my team. I know. I was there when you did the, I was there <laughs> when you were drafting and you were telling me your strategy. You can always pick up closers. As soon as some guy gets injured, yeah, you can but pick up his, his, uh, replacement. The thing with closers is a lot of them don't have good ERAs. Right. Um, and so I'd, I'd rather not have that guy on my team. Plus I don't have the stress of trying to scour the waiver wire looking for a closer. Right, and they don't help you in the other stats because they pitch so few innings. Right, that they they are even if they have like a super low whip, it doesn't affect your team whip because they usually have pitched like one inning. Mm-hmm. Right, yeah. Same thing with the strikeouts. So yeah. okay, they got two strikeouts in one inning, great. But I mean, does it like it's it's not it doesn't have like a it's like a little drop in a big pond, you know? Sometimes in terms of your pitching, exactly. Uh, that's coming from me who hasn't played fantasy baseball in a few years. <laughs> but you know your stuff. Yeah, sometimes. Before we sign off, remember, you can listen and subscribe to new and archived episodes of the Skip and Josh podcast wherever you listen to podcasts, including Apple Podcasts, Stitcher, Google Play, iHeartRadio, and of course, Spotify. If you listen to the show through Apple Podcasts, please leave us a review. We would love to hear from you via email, skipandjoshshow at gmail.com, via Twitter at Skip and Josh, or by liking and following our Facebook page. As always, you can get all the links to everything I just talked about on our website, skipandjosh.com. We leave you with this. So, Josh, do you have anything you want to uh, leave the listeners with? Actually, yes. So, I was listening to a podcast this week. Um, Mm -hmm. What was it called? uh, It was actually the Fantasy Focus Baseball Podcast. You still listen to that? It's not the one that you used to listen to. It's, um, It's on CBS Sports. Oh, okay. So actually, it's called Fantasy Baseball Today, not Fantasy Focus. Sorry. Right. Okay, 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 okay. Anyway, they, they sometimes talk about things that have nothing to do with baseball. Yeah. So they mentioned something just in passing, and I heard it, and I'm like, oh, that can't be right. They must be exaggerating. And then I was listening to the Tony Kornheiser show. Right. And they mentioned the exact same thing. Mm-hmm. And I said, okay, well, now I've heard the same thing in two different places, so... It might be right. It might be it might be accurate. Or it could just be the case of like the wrong news spreading because people don't bother to check their their facts. Okay, so what I did was I went online and I went to check to see if this was true. Yeah, okay, so tell me what it is. And lo and behold, it's true. <laughs> the Avengers is three hours and two minutes long? Who can sit through a movie that's three hours and two minutes long? <laughs> okay, but the thing is, this is something you can check instantly. You go on your phone, you open up any movie app, and it shows you runtime, and then you have it, 182 minutes. It's right there. Well, I did check, and so it is true. But my point is, forget whether it's true or not, who wants to sit through a three-hour movie? 
Well, I'll tell you, I went to see the movie on Thursday. <laughs> I don't have that kind of attention span. I I didn't like it that much, to be honest. I think it's it's a good movie. It's a really good superhero movie if you're into all the Marvel stuff. I'm kind of tired of it. And it was long. Like, it felt like long because it's like, until they do something, it takes an hour till anything happens. You know? Is there an intermission? There should be. It was it was a fine movie. It was good, but I like all these movies, it could never possibly live up to the hype that it has generated. It's just it's it's a superhero movie. It is what it is. It's fine. It's good if you like it. If you like the Marvel stuff, you're gonna like it. If you're like my wife who doesn't care less and she just wants to see a good movie, she's like, eh, it was alright, you know? Right. Yeah. So I want to uh, mention two things. One is very, very short. I want to give a shout out to a listener in Mexico City, Mariana Lopez. So thank you for listening, Mariana. And you mentioned last week about the stupid little stats that broadcasters come up with, like this weird things that make no sense. So I heard on TSN this week. So, you know, Nathan McKinnon, he scored a goal. So he has points now in eight straight playoff games. Mm Mm-hmm. Nice accomplishment, right? Yeah. So it's on TSN when they're on Sports Center, <laughs> she says, "It's not her that writes the copy. I don't even know. What, I think it was. Uh, I don't remember who it was. Maybe it was Natasha. I'm not sure." They say uh, Nathan McKinnon now has the third longest uh, consecutive point streak in Avs playoffs history. Okay. So first of all, that's Avalanche playoff history, which is not that long. Right. And it's the third most. Right. If it was the most, then I, I might understand you mentioning If it's the it. most, you could say, yeah, he has the most. It's the third most. Or if in it was Avs the third most history. in NHL history, yeah, exactly. maybe I could see you saying it. Like, but okay, the third most in, in Avalanche history, who cares? You could just say he got points in eight straight games. It's a great accomplishment. Yeah, you know? exactly. Yeah, I was like, as soon as I heard that, I was like, oh, Josh is going to like that one. That's exactly what I was referring to. Thank you. <laughs> all right. That's all I got. I'll talk to you next week. Yeah, have a good week. More NBA next week? Well, I guess now that you've lifted the band. All right. And I hope you and everybody out there enjoys the Kentucky Derby today. Yes, of course. All right, talk to you.